If you are ready to stand up for Susie, say yes. yes. If you are ready to end hate, say yes. yes. Our next speaker is Grace Shimizu. She's representing the Comfort Women Justice Coalition. Hey everybody, it's really good to be here with you. We of the Comfort Ju Women Justice Coalition stand with you in solidarity today. As we think of the threat to Muslims and the many others in our communities targeted as a so-called enemy or potential enemy today, we remember the internment of U.S. citizens and immigrants of Japanese, Italian, and German ancestry during World War II, and we say it must not happen again. As we think of the millions of Latinos who are threatened with separation of their families and deportation, we remember the Chinese Exclusion Act, and we say it must not happen again. As we think of the young black men and women shot down in their youth and the millions locked up in the U.S. prisons, we remember the lynchings and enslavement that went on for hundreds of years, and we say it must not happen again. As we think of the Native peoples protecting their land at Standing Rock, we, re we remember the centuries of genocide and the stealing of lands, and we say it must not happen again. As we learn that Supreme Court nominees want to make LGBTQs outlaws once again, we think of all those who have been bullied, jailed, and killed for being true to themselves. And we say, it must not happen again. As we think of all the women and girls who are victims of sexual violence, both here and around the world, we think of the 400,000 World War II comfort women, and we say, it must not happen again. We stand here in solidarity with all who are threatened by this nationalistic, racist, xenophobic, anti-woman, and oppressive reality. It must not happen again, and united, all of us together, it will not happen again. I'm Larry Almamoto, and this is my wife, Judith. <laughs> and, uh, you're a member of the union? I was uh, the ILW, the Longshore Union. I retired in 1988. And you have some experience. I mean, the uh, Trump administration, some of the people are saying that, they're, uh, that the incarceration, the internment of Japanese and Japanese Americans were justified and they want a possible registry for all Muslims. What does it hearken to in your mind? Uh, terrible, terrible. Should never happen. It should, it should have never happened in the beginning because we were never disloyal. You know, I was 11, year old, 11 years old when the war began. I, was, I thought I was an American until I told me I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> So what was it like at that time? I mean, you're, you were an American, and then they, you're rounded, being rounded up. Yeah, I, well, I was 11 years old. It was a lark for me. You know, as a kid, you didn't think that much politically about what was happening. But uh, my father and my mother, who were, in, I think, in their 40s, they were um, pretty well disturbed, you know. And it was pretty traumatic? What, which, did you? Did they send you to a camp? Oh yeah, I was in the camp. I was in the camp in Santa Anita Racetrack for six months, and then I was over in uh, Arizona, Hilo River Indian Reservation. And what were the conditions for Japanese and Japanese Americans in these camps? Well, we, we were a very hardy people, you know. We make do with whatever we get, fortunately, or unfortunately, however you want to look at it. But uh, I think we did well, looking back on it. And, and the atmosphere at that time, during uh, prior to the Second World War, after the Second World War, was to attack and blame Japanese, whether they're all Japanese, uh, uh, for what was going on. Yeah, well, that's that's the uh, general, gen, that's the general picture I think they wanted to paint. But uh, we who were uh, born and raised here and educated here didn't feel that way at all, and that's why we were. We couldn't understand why we were so slighted that, that way. Yeah. And 
you uh, became a longshoreman in the ILW. What was the history of the ILW in relationship to discrimination and racism? Well, when Harry Bridges came along and became the, our leader, he said there's no discrimination in this union. And, uh, and it was a good union. It was an education for me. You know, anyone who went into that union uh, got an education. And a lot of people didn't go into that union because they felt that it was too, too much of a radical union, which it was in, the, in those days. And it was a good union. And what do you think the labor movement the union should do today to, uh, to protect their members and also to stop this kind of hysteria that's happening? Um, what they should really do is follow the ILW, Longshore, policy and everything, and everything will turn out great. No kidding. I'm not kidding. Be because the longshoremen did very well, except the work, work has gone downhill, you know, the amount of work. When I was working, we had 6,000 people working in one day. And now we have maybe... I'll be right back up okay. and go to the wall of compassion. Okay. 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 Um, what was that again? And you have, you're now down to 1,000. Uh, you th are you shocked that this is happening, it seems to be happening again, that the government is actually justifying what happened to Japanese Americans uh, in the, during the war? Uh, well, I'm not shocked. I'm, uh, it's happened because I was only a kid when it happened. But after I grew up you know, and learned what was happening, then it was a shock. Um, that's why I would I would um, stick up for the Muslims, which are trying to get get into the same boat that they put us into. And the unions as well are coming under attack. Trump wants to uh, attack unions and privatize and attack public services. What do you think about his agenda? Terrible, terrible. I think he's all he's all wet. We should never follow his policy because he's going he's going to tear this country down, and we were trying to build it up you know, as union-wise. And also there's a rise of militarization, uh, attacking China, n more bases, and militarization in Japan with the Abe. What are your concerns about growing militarization in Asia and a possible war with Asia, within Asia? Uh, well, I don't believe we'll ever have one because in this day and age, to have wars in between two big countries like that is absolutely foolish, my, my view anyway, you know. But uh, I've never been listened to since I grew up because I, I had more radical views. <laughs> and you're also a painter? Yeah, I'm an artist, yeah. How did you get into painting? Well, I, as a kid, I always drew, and then I went to art school. And art school was a great place to go to in those days. They freed your soul. And, you know, and, and were you painting in the camp where you were there? Oh, while I was a kid, yeah. I had two great teachers uh, who were teaching high school at the time, and I learned more and more from them. <laughs> and after I got out, I uh, continued on to art school instead of going to college. All my friends were going to college, and I looked at them, and I thought, what the hell are they learning? They're not learning much of anything. And in art school, I met a lot of free thinkers, and that's where I learned how to think... Uh, more radically about things, you know. And you were able to paint, be a painter as a longshoreman as well? Yeah, oh yeah, but I had, I have three kids, I married in three kids, so I had to go to work, you know, I couldn't paint all the time. But longshoring was a great place to work if you had to go to work. Okay, thank you.